talking about these things. We have a few awards to give out. And I'm the fortunate guy who gets to introduce some of my heroes. <laughs> you have heroes in this room? Uh -oh. I have some heroes in this room. Uh -oh. My first hero is a man who's willing to take on the onerous task of herding cats. <laughs> willing to be the chairman of the Libertarian Party of Pennsylvania. And having been close to these things back in the past when I was young and able to handle it, I know how difficult a task that is. So my first hero that I'd like to introduce, the chairman of the Libertarian Party of Pennsylvania, Stephen Sheets. Thank you, David Lord Easley. <laughs> wow, what an awesome turnout we have here tonight. Thank you all for coming out, braving the elements. And I have to say, everyone in here, in one way, form, or another, by the way, David, your bar is really low when it comes to heroes. I gotta say. <laughs> but seriously, everybody in this room has done some awesome, wonderful things. And the fight for came our liberty from, for all intents and purposes, the man. The first award this evening is going to be somewhat of a joke in a way. But not really, because it's so true. The first award this evening is going to the former chairman of the Libertarian Party of Pennsylvania, <laughs> Dr. Tom Stevens. <laughs> saga that happened in the year of 2012, boy were you missing some serious drama. Thanks, sir. This drama started out with Dr. Tom deleting posts, banning people from speaking and free speech, and wow, he just became a complete, total authoritarian douchebag. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> but at the end of the day, we have to thank Dr. Tom Stevens. Because if it wasn't for Dr. Tom Stevens, the entirety of the liberty minded libertarians, dare I say, the libertarian wing of the Libertarian Party, <laughs> would not have gotten up and stood up and joined with other people in the Libertarian Party of Pennsylvania who've been standing up and screaming for years with voices that have been completely drowned out. I want to thank everybody and I want to thank Dr. Tom Stevens for bringing Libertarians together. <laughs> Are you here this evening, Dr. Tom? <laughs> this is Monty, it's for you, man. What is the Monty for? Pardon me. The Monty says it is presented by Montgomery County Libertarian Party Committee in recognition for the best contributions to the cause of liberty in Pennsylvania and beyond. This is the Extraordinary Party Unification Award. <laughs> And frankly, that is going to be the last time I speak. <laughs> Yay! This next award. Wow. Now, how many people in this room consider themselves anarchists? Come on, come on, 
raise your hands. I assume that's everyone. And by anarchist, I mean you believe that government, all government policy should be privatized. We don't need right? no leaders. We don't need anybody to confiscate our tax dollars and create a monopoly, right? Right. Right. That's right. 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 Come on. Well, there's people in this room who've been fighting this for years. There's people who've been fighting this for a very short period of time. There's people who've come to the anarchy philosophy relatively recently. I consider myself to be one of the latter. I came to the anarchy philosophy um, probably two years ago, I'll say, when I was doing research for one of the Agora.io conferences, some conferences, if you will. And during this particular time, I got to be good friends with Larkin Rose, who is our resident local anarchist, and who, dare I say, is responsible for the conversion of many, many people yes. in this room. Here, here. Right on. Right on. <laughs> Working on a project with Larkin Rose is Josie Harris. And Josie Harris has been working on the Outlaw Project. Ladies and gentlemen, this particular Monty is for excellence in Liberty Media. Liberty Media, as defined as being a righteous outlaw. May I present to you, Ms. Josie Wells. convincing me that um, I could do it and that I could stand in front of a camera um, and, and say the things that I've been feeling for years and years. Um, and thank you to all of you for the support um, and for getting to know you all over the past year. It's been amazing. Um, I definitely would have, would not have been able to do this if it weren't for um, everyone here. I wouldn't have found myself and, and um, found the confidence that I could to do it without you guys. So thank you and thank you, Mark. The, the, this comes with an actual prize as well. I'm sorry, my bad. Yeah. Along with the prize is one ounce of silver. Hey, who's next? Okay. Like the music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you bust them up? Yeah, bust them up. No, no, no. The dancer is coming up next. <laughs> Darren. Darren Wolf. Yes, I will spare you any further dancing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, I got rolled into giving an award, which is it, this one here? Oh, okay, this one here. For somebody. <laughs> Not you, Sam. Uh, <laughs> okay, I've been brought, roped into giving an award to somebody who has been a tremendous activist uh, lately. Starting with his co-founder of a group called Citizens for Liberty. Uh, somebody who has been able to reach out to people of all different ideologies, whether they are anarchists, libertarians, conservatives, even people on the left, like Green Party people. Yeah. Yes, so yeah. the award Great. should go to, yeah. perhaps we should share the, um, not the actual award, but uh, the honors with not only Steve Piotrowski, but Mother Jane. Oh. I should also mention Jackie Piotrowski, 
and even uh, Adam can be trusted too, right? Yeah. So I'm yeah. honored to be able to give this award in excellence in bridge building to Steve Piotrowski. <laughs> You know how to do that. Here we go right here. I don't really know how to speak, but thank you guys so much. Um, all right. Okay, more beer money. Um, but I'm really honored to uh, just just be a part. You know, I'm a registered Republican. Don't hold it against me. But I'm really honored to be a part of the, the Libertarian Party. And um, I don't know. I guess it's, it's changed my views on a lot of things. Uh, with uh, my group, uh, Citizens for Liberty, we've really been trying to work with like every kind of group, try to steer people to uh, you know, be more liberty minded. You know, we've been successful in working with a lot of people like that. We've been having various members in the Libertarian Party come and speak at our meetings, but um, yeah, I really do appreciate everything you guys do, especially this. I'm gonna hang this on the wall, look at this. This is awesome. You know, it's a Let you guys know that 2014, you know, we're all liberty-minded people in here. I just want to thank you. You know, everybody's a part of it. We're all a part of a bigger cause, and uh, I don't know. I got a good feeling that 2014 is going to be bigger and better than the rest of the years, right? You know, um, we're just going to continue to fight for liberty, and without everybody, you know, it's very important for everybody in this room to be here. Look at it, it's snowing outside. You know, we're all here. So thank you guys very much, and thank you, Steve, and everybody else for this. I really do appreciate. It. Look forward to the future. Thank when you. are your meetings? Okay, the meetings for CFL are the third Thursday of the month. Um, we meet at the Jeffersonville Golf Club in Narstown. Uh, we're actually having a meeting this coming Thursday. We're gonna have a holiday party. And uh, one of the things we're gonna do is stuff stockings full of coal, and we're gonna send them to all the naughty politicians. <laughs> Thank you. Won't that like double the price of coal in the market? <laughs> I think we can do that, right? Okay. <laughs> All right. Good job. Darren was so enthusiastic to get up here that I wasn't too able to explain why he's my hero. I've learned so much from him about the evils of war. The destruction of war, the moral depravity of war. And I'm so impressed by all that he has done as an anti war activist. My next hero is, I think, the only person in this room who was already an active libertarian back in the last millennium when I joined the party. He's the go to guy if you have a question about ballot access. Or petition drives. But he's my hero because he introduced me to Marillion and to Neofess. <laughs> Richard Schwartz. All right. Did I just win the 50 50? <laughs> <laughs> it's all very correct. I'm real happy to give this award. As it states, this is the wrong war. <laughs> this is the right award. Okay. It's all Steve. It's his fault. The Monty for Excellence in Community Service. Who here would like to see an award given to someone who truly puts his life, his or her life, we don't know yet what the recipient is, on the line every day? I know I would. And I first met, it's Fernando Antonio Saguero. I first met Fernando, as probably some other people in this room did, at the warming station at Occupy. <laughs> That beacon of light amidst that, you know, whatever the mobs that were there were, it was just so refreshing. I used to drop by City Hall a couple times during the week, and that was just such a welcoming sight to, to, to go there to the warming station and, and the other stuff. And, and Fernando actually told me some of the trials and tribulations uh, uh, involved with Occupy Philadelphia. 
But we also know him for his uh, survival training and uh, some other things that he has done. And he is absolutely a most deserving uh, recipient of this year's Monty for Excellence in Community Service, Fernando Antonio Sanchez. I appreciate it. Excellence in community service for Survive and Thrive. Quick show of hands. Who here has been to at least one Survive and Thrive meetup? Mmm, I'd say upward of 50% of the room. Say that. Yes, you can. That was a good one. So, um, yeah, and I, uh, I appreciate the acknowledgement of the consistency, because that's probably the hardest part. Any of us who engage in activism, uh, you know, we can often see over the years uh, flashes in the pan that, that pop up and show promise, uh, but it's actually a lot more difficult to keep that internal gyroscope focused and to stay focused on, on what's important and, and to keep hammering and keep seeking those opportunities and, and to negotiate all the simple little political, the, in, the, uh, the small minded political stuff that will happen in groups of people that will often burn each other out. So um, this is accepted in peace and love, which is, uh, makes it all happen. Word, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> Have you enjoyed the party? Woo! Could we thank the guy who organized the party? Maybe. Anyone who's going to organize a party like this must be a hero. <laughs> but he's organized so much more an activist who has a national reputation yeah. and a national impact. Jim Bat. with you and I, I want to thank David Easley for stepping in as our MC. It was going to be Ken Krawchuk. I don't know why we didn't invite uh, David to do it uh, from the beginning. So what a much better choice we ended up with. <laughs> yeah, everybody here deserves an award. I, I think that's fair. I mean, we, we're look around you. You are sitting with some of the most incredible badasses in the Liberty Movement. <laughs> There's no denying it. Like every single person here um, deserves an award. Let's see what, who's next. Okay. All right. Um, this is an award for somebody that did something that I think is incredible um, because he used the arts to spread a message of liberty. So this is the this is a, a Monty for excellence in liberty arts, and it's for Steve Miller Miller. <laughs> Federal Detention, the musical. This was, I mean, this, this was an act of brilliance, to me, in, in my opinion. I thought it was so uh, perfect. Take something as violent and nasty as a federal mugging of activists and turning it into a, a, a work of art that was hilarious. And it really just, you know, it, it gave those thugs all the respect they deserved. You know? <laughs> Silver. Thank you. you. Wow. Yeah. Silver, silver. Hey, Jamie, you're not done yet. What's that? Good morning. <laughs> wow. This is a big honor. Never doubt what can be done by a gutter faggot with a dream, a couple of imprisoned friends, and an ounce of high grade marijuana. <laughs> Just so I actually made a list. 
Dan Scully, who, if he was any more like Adam Kokesh, would have been in federal prison. Uh, did an amazing job. I owe him a great deal of thanks. Short Stack, who was a dominatrix, which gave her great experience to play a septicop. Uh, <laughs> uh, Dave Pick, who uh, is such a method actor that he killed 20 IQ points in order, in order to play Annie Poe. Uh, <laughs> Himself for keeping out of my hair so the musical could stay good. Uh, <laughs> Don Bizarre, you were amazing. Thank you for coming on stage opening night and planning that fake weed and Adam Kokesh's pants. That was <laughs> the SEPTA Police. This would, this would not have been possible without the SEPTA Police. Up and mugging Kyle Prouty in a SEPTA station, <laughs> touching somebody who's the human equivalent of a landfill, giving me a great subplot for the <laughs> Thank you for the SEPTA Police. The 7,800 people who voted for me for judge, thank you. Yeah. Officer Chung of the Federal Detention Center. There were many nights spent with writer's block sitting in front of a blank screen and thinking of that perfect bronze star fruit. Calling in the distance, saying, Steve Miller Miller, you must finish. It must go on. Hello. I have the silver. I have the Monty. Thank you, you all. Yeah, uh, Steve mentioned he was our libertarian candidate for judge of Court of Common Pleas in Philadelphia. And he had an incredible platform, and that platform was... Not, not guilty! guilty. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the kind of candidate that you, I might even consider voting for. Well, I won't go that far, but uh, it was great to see him make that effort. 7,800, 7,800 people, I believe, said, uh, agree that not guilty is the way to go. Okay. Okay. Oh, no. Anyway, sorry. All right. Now, the next award is for somebody that you guys all know and love. Um, Wait a minute, give me that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Who's been to Smoke Down Prohibition? <laughs> Almost everybody, okay? You know, a year ago, these began in Philadelphia. Um, you know, somebody said, you know what, what if we just go to the park and, and we all smoke joints and we don't give a crap, okay? And what if we just have fun and we, we, we disobey the law because the law is wrong and we can make a spectacle of it? That would have been impressive in itself to do it one time. This event has happened 11 times. Number 12 is coming up next week, okay? This was, this is such an important activity in Philadelphia to just ignore the law, have fun, make a statement, uh, just, it's, it's what is Philly has needed for so long, so I was so glad to see this. Uh, he's paid the price uh, yesterday. N.A. Poe was sentenced to a year of probation, and uh, he's not allowed to, to associate with certain people. <laughs> Any felons that might be here, just keep your distance from Poe so he doesn't get a violation. Um, <laughs> a minor fine, and you know what? He spent five days in jail. He an eight hundred and five dollar fine, a year of probation. You might think that cost is pretty high, but without it, we wouldn't have got Steve Miller Brothers musical. So, <laughs> so, you know, so I, I hope that that price was worth it. He had to, you know, make the investment, but we all get to enjoy the, the results. So, uh, please give a big round of applause for any Get him some silver. Get, there, here you go. Here's your, your little tip. Give the man some silver. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, thank you, everyone, so much. Uh, libertarians have been such a big part of all our work. You know, a lot of you don't even smoke marijuana. I know that so many of you have come down to support fucking Danker got dressed up like a wolf. <laughs> 
you know, either who was donating or live, live streaming like Mike did the whole time. Everyone in the liver talking, Chris hit this cocksucker on three videos in the fucking defense. I mean, the prosecution brought to court were Chris Monko's. Uh, <laughs> like, but, uh, you know, one of them actually worked out because one of them was Eddie Poe's message to the feds and, and, and Chris put that out and then they put that in there and then the judge got to watch what I really wanted to tell those fucking people and then yesterday he stood up for us being able to say whatever, you know, that we want to. So we're going to continue to say whatever we want to, we're going to continue to do whatever the fuck we want to and hopefully at some point everyone else will come around. Word. Thank you very much. some things on the ride up in the car, uh, just what we thought was going to be happening at this party. So we, we're big football fans, we know it's the, a weapon of mass distraction, but that's not what Vince Lombardi was thinking when he came up with it. Um, so we, we did some over-under odds for the party, so... Um, we called Vegas and we got the latest Tropicana odds on the Monty Awards. Okay, so number of people in End the Fed t-shirts. Uh, the over-under was four and a half. <laughs> and maybe what? <laughs> <laughs> Number of women in minorities. Uh, the overrunner on that one was three and a half. <laughs> you brought two of them. <laughs> Number of people carrying bear mace. Bear mace, that was two. Who's carrying bear mace? Uh, anyone? 45 counts. Where's Fernando? <laughs> Speaking of Fernando, number of people open carrying at the party. Uh, show of hands. Who's open carrying right now? Actually, don't show. I mean, just show your hands. Not concealed carry. Keep that quiet. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> you can guess it if you're concealed. Yeah. Number of conversations overheard about Bitcoin. <laughs> That one was nine. <laughs> that one was nine. Uh, and by the way, if any of you are looking to score a big jackpot tonight, uh, Adam Kokesh showing up was at 40 to 1 odds. <laughs> Speaking of Adam Kokesh, defense funds robbed during party. <laughs> The over-under for that was $3,500. Oh, man! <laughs> Number of people in the room who have trolled us on Facebook but won't say shit to our faces. Zero. Because <laughs> we'll, we'll always say shit to your face. <laughs> no, uh, but for real, it's really nice. Uh, this whole year has been great. We're looking forward to doing a lot more work with everyone. And let's have some drinks and have a good time. Thank you so much. <laughs> We have one. We have one more award, and uh, this award is for somebody that you might not even have known what he did to earn this award because he doesn't promote himself. I only found out about it just by chance uh, how successful he was. Um, this is one of one of us that actually just said, you know what, I'm going to run for school board, and he, you know, and he actually had the misfortune of winning. <laughs> <laughs> and he had to serve on the school board. Okay, now <laughs> school board and constant. Okay, well we'll get to that. Now, and I I knew like like wow that's you're really uh, you're really gonna go for that. I'm like I feel kind of feel bad for you, you know. And I thought well you know what you know somebody that's gonna do that is liberty minded. It's just gonna be frustrating and it's bureaucratic and meetings and I'm like how are you gonna have any impact? Like really, are you really gonna have an impact? You know, one one guy. You know, and um, and I didn't really understand how what kind of impact he had until I was at a party. One of Christina's uh, college buddies comes up to me and says, uh, "Do you know Rob Pepe? He's a libertarian. He's a staunch libertarian." I don't know. Well, our Christina's friend Tim is a school teacher in Rob's district. Okay. He goes, "We haven't gotten a raise in years, and it's all Rob Pepe's fault." Yeah. all the other school board members. <laughs> so turn them to the dark. So this, this award is for, you know, I wasn't really sure what to call this, but we're calling it Excellence in Holding the Line. And for service in the Upper Perkyoman School Board. I mean, this was a 
real sacrifice. It was painful. And, yeah, I mean, a total painful sacrifice. I don't recommend normal people take on this job. <laughs> ounce of silver. Now everybody got an ounce of silver that's an award winner, but for Rob, I pulled out my 2005 Liberty Dollar silver, Ooh, which is oh, actually no, contraband. Now I, no, I have a target on my back yeah. too, right? It's actually illegal to, to sell this or own it, or this right. is considered contraband by the federal government because uh, it's just too dangerous to have something that's this pretty, uncirculated. It had a suggested retail price of $10 at the time in, in 2005, but uh, I'm proud to give it to you, Rob. Thank you. I don't recommend that anybody in this room ever run for local office. Let's be clear. <laughs> Let's be clear. One of, one of the last meetings I had, I got to make some closing or parting comments, and I told him it was a pleasure, a privilege, and a pain, and I had no intention of coming back. And I also reminded him why I was there. Um, I was there to be a thorn in their side, to make them think, to ask a lot of questions. And it was common knowledge that while I was on the school board, the four painful years that I served, the countless hours and nights that I was away from my family, I thank my wife for putting up with that. Um, I asked more questions and I delved into more issues than all the other school board members combined and probably everyone in the community combined with them. That whether it be an accounting situation or some proposed event or whatever the issue was, my goal was to be there to dig in and basically bust their stones and expose them to the light. I also took the opportunity while I was there, whenever I got to hit that microphone, when we talked about taxation, I consistently reminded them that taxation is theft, there's always a gun in the room. And I was quoted a few times in the local paper as saying that taxation is theft and so on and so forth. And Jim's right, I did have some influence on the other school board members. We went three years with a zero millage tax increase because I spoke out against it. I don't know what's going to happen now that I'm gone. Nobody stepped in to fill my shoes, but hey, that's life, you know. It is what it is. I was encouraged by some of the people in this room to run for office. I don't know why they did that, because they're not doing that now. What was different four years ago? Why were you encouraged to me? I didn't do it. Yeah. But I did it. Um, blame Ron Paul. I blame Ron Paul. I did, I did say that. One of the last things I said, don't blame me. I voted for Ron Paul. I said that at the meeting. Got a few laughs, and it was a good, it was kind of a cathartic moment, because it, for everyone that was there that had struggled with me being on the board, other the teachers and the administration, it came full circle for them. And then many of them came up to me after the fact and said, you know, if nothing else, you were consistent, you stayed true to your beliefs, right, Fernando? You stayed true to your beliefs and you stayed true to your convictions and your principles throughout this process. So thanks for the award. I appreciate it. I love all of you. I appreciate all the work that all of you do. And some of, some of the time I think, why did I do it? I don't know. Maybe someday I'll figure it out, but, you know, thank you. <laughs>